So hello to everyone. My name is Roman. Hello, and my name is Iveta. And we will now share our presentation with you. So the presentation will be about geocaching and photography to discover the beauty of countryside. And for the start, we will tell a bit about ourselves to you. So, would you like to start? Um, so, uh, we work together, I think already 10 years. Um, when I met Viva in, in project in training course, I was working with, with uh, youngsters at risk uh, in social service. But now I'm working at youth house and and then I met Romance. He was a youngster and he was very active and we were making it together. He was participating in training course, the local training course courses, the projects, and and now we are how to say colleagues. So we work together. Um, we are from very small city. Uh, we have only about um, 18,000 citizens and uh, this youth house where we work uh, it's the only one youth house in our city and when we started uh, to work the youth work was not very active but uh, slowly 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 we started and uh, now we are very proud and glad about our organization and youngsters and the, the picture you can see is uh, from uh, the last project uh, in the uh, Caribbean. Uh, in May, we took young youngsters um, to Caribbean island and we had the youth exchange. So we are proud that I, I already during this situation, we had not online project, but we could do real project with the real people. Yes. And about myself, I have been a volunteer in Youth House for more than 10 years. And uh, yeah, actively participating in different activities, in different projects. Later on, I was very interested in international work and international projects. So I applied to similar activities that were um, provided by our national agency. So I learned more about youth exchanges, youth work, uh, and uh, yeah, that's how I was getting involved in, in, in these kind of projects. And uh, now I have uh, moved on uh, from the youth house and I'm not so active here as I used to be because uh, I've, I've started studying and working, uh, and, uh, not so much time to to volunteer, but still I try to remain my connection with CESIS, with CESIS Youth House, and to help um, with different activities. One of them are youth exchanges and international projects. But before we go into our experiences, we would like to tell you more about our city, about our team. So, as Iveta mentioned, CESIS is a small city in about 90 kilometers from the capital of Latvia and we have the total inhabitants of 18,000 uh, uh, and um, I would say that we can consider our city as a rural area so it's not a big city and uh, around it there are a lot of uh, smaller villages and youngsters from these smaller villagers, villages mostly study in our city so uh, that's how we get the connection with our participants and with our youngsters. And here you can see some pictures from our uh, youth house that we have in the center of our town and uh, one picture of our youth participants that I managed to find. Anything as well? No. No. Okay. So the first project we would like to share with you was a one from some time ago. It was one of our first projects as a um, NGO that we established and Iveta will tell more about it. Uh, one of my professions is art therapist. 
and uh, young youngsters had the idea that maybe we could include some art therapy methods and we chose the uh, photography and uh, the the main idea of, of this project was to help uh, help youngsters to to understand and uh, express themselves uh, through photography and uh, understand their emotions themselves by taking uh, pictures in in uh, and finding emotions in uh, city in other people by meeting people um, this was a very small city at mountains and uh, only only 30 people lived there at the moment when we came a uh, long time ago this was a little bit bigger city about 300 people but after years uh, only elderly people stayed there and uh, this the feeling was like we we were living in in some family because they knew each other of course and uh, each day we had uh, some topic the emotions and the youngsters went outside to take uh, a pictures and then they came back and we were discussing um they shared what they find they shared their thoughts uh, feelings and then we had um, a writing session too about those emotions and pictures and finally uh, we created a blog uh, and uh, the the blog you can find uh, by project name express to progress and um, one one of days were really interesting because uh, we were taking uh, pictures with old cameras and we were developing uh, films uh, and the process was was really really interesting it's like it's like a magic you take a picture and then you forget about it and then it uh, shows up uh, in front of you and i think you can um, mm -hmm. there are more pictures uh, from the process yeah so some of our participants were more uh professional in photography so they were the ones that were leading uh, the workshops for others who were new to photography the uh, teaching us more about all these uh, details that need to be taken into account when taking pictures and uh, um, yeah here you can see we also had a brainstorming session about those emotions or feelings that we want to explore so um, in this project there were 10 participants from latvia and 10 participants from spain and they were from different uh, places in Spain. And um, it was also for them first time when they were uh, focusing on expressing emotion through photography. Prior to that, some of them were connected to photography and taking picture professionally, but uh, just at some kind of event and never thinking more how they can express themselves in, in this uh, uh, technique. So here's how we started, just by learning and getting to know each other and uh, this uh, part where we were learning how to take photography also worked as a great team building activity for us. And um, here you can see the time that we were working with the black and white film. And uh, yeah, it was uh, for almost all of us first time when we were developing pictures, developing the film. So yeah, each of us had, uh, I think, four or three shots that we could make. So we had to be very uh, technical and to consider if we want to take this picture, if we don't, what will be shown in this picture, what we want to express in it, and uh, just more planning and to put more uh, of an idea into this picture, not just like it's nowadays that you can take a uh, thousand pictures and then just delete them. But, so we had to think more about what we want to show, what we want to capture. Yeah, I think the most magic uh, moment was the, the moment when you see what, uh, what what's in your picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, 
suspense that you don't know what exactly will will happen and what will be shown in your picture. And uh, here are just some of the black and white pictures that were uh, produced in this project. So each picture also has a description from the author of the picture and you can check more about it in the blog. There are still descriptions and some more photos that were taken by also digital cameras. But here are just some of the ones that were done uh, black and white with these old cameras. And, and I think this one was mine. Okay, yeah, that's your testimony. And there were a lot of abandoned houses and they were open. We went inside those houses and we could feel uh, something from, from people who lived there. They left some furniture, pictures, uh, even photo albums and uh, yeah, we were like discovering uh, something uh, personal and and uh, the impact of, um, mm -hmm. of it was really, really deep and uh, meaningful. And it was also interesting for the people who live in this small village since nothing uh, happens there daily. So uh, for a week, uh, a group of international people coming to their town, uh, meeting them, just introducing ourselves to them and them uh, introducing themselves to us. It was very interesting to learn about the village's story, how it used to be and how it's now and how uh, things have changed and why it has happened. And we found out uh, quite curiously that um, the small village story is quite connected uh, also to our town story, that there are no uh, possibilities for the youngsters to study or to get a higher education or to get some kind of work. So they are forced to leave their town to study uh, in a bigger city. So if they uh, decide to come back, they come back, but mostly they stay in these bigger cities, so the town gets less and less populated. And we were thinking more how to um, re repopulate these places and how to try to organize more exchanges in these uh, rural areas, which are charming and beautiful, but uh, you won't find them on the internet or somewhere because uh, nobody writes about them or nobody shows them. So, yeah. And um, here you can see the final event of this project, which was organized uh, in the only public place of this uh, village. And it was the only bar in the town, which was owned by the mayor's wife, Carmen. So it was very interesting for us. It was not always open. But uh, we managed to talk with, with uh, locals that we can have the exhibition there. And it was an art exhibition with our uh, pictures and with our uh, stories that we wrote. And uh, it was interesting for all of the people that came to see themselves in the pictures, to see uh, their town. And yeah, just to see all of it with a point of view from, from us. Um, and there was very interesting and nice uh, story. Uh, one man came uh, to this city because he was born there and lived as a child. And then he, he came back, uh, but he didn't remember and didn't know where his house is. And then in the exhibition, he recognized uh, his house in, in our pictures and we could uh, show him where, she's, where his house is. And so he find his uh, childhood house. And it was really emotional and touching. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was uh, one of our projects. And the next one that we want to share is um, a project that took place in 2019. And uh, it took place in Romania, uh, a small town, city of Arad, uh, near the border with Hungary. 
and the project was dedicated to um, promote or to raise the issue of preservation of cultural and historical monuments or uh, heritage among young people and popularize, popularize it uh, and viewing of it using geocaching method. And uh, this project's name was Uncovered to Discover. And uh, there were 12 participants from Latvia and 12 participants from Romania. And uh, how did we came up with this idea? Uh, usually in our youth house, in, at some point of the year, we organize a workshop connected to uh, project writing and to connected with uh, youth exchanges. And uh, we offer our uh, youngsters that are uh, interested in, in international projects to learn more about these youth exchanges and to participate in creating them. So what better way to create than to do it practically. That's our point of view. So uh, we usually try to write a youth exchange. If there are more than uh, more than enough people, then we try to write uh, two applications, but uh, it's a way for youngsters to go through all of this process and to develop the idea by themselves. And we are just, um, giving them some feedback and uh, trying to uh, nudge them in the right direction. So this was one of the um, workshops and brainstorming sessions that we had, that the youngsters wanted to um, discover more these cultural heritage spots and uh, these monuments that uh, every city has, but maybe they're not represented in uh, some kind of interactive way. And that's why they came up with an idea to use this geocaching because it's free, it's international and it's available to everybody. And uh, to those who don't know, geocaching is an outdoor recreational activity in which participants use uh, GPS uh, receiver or mobile device and other navigational techniques to hide and seek containers called geocaches or caches at specific locations marked by coordinates all over the world. So here you can see just some pictures how these caches can look. They can be from a bigger box up to this small um, capsule with, with just a pen and the paper just to mark that you have found it and that, that you have been there. And then there's this application where you can see these spots. And the good thing with this application is that each uh, uh, geocache has a description. So the youngsters decided to work on that, on researching what interesting places are there in their towns and the placing geocaches in, in, in these spots with the uh, uh, created um, their created the uh, description of this place and why it's important and how they view this place and why they want to share it with other people. So how and what did we do in this project? So this project took place in Arad in, in Romania, but prior to that, youngsters from Latvia to prepare uh, to prepare their knowledge about geocaches and youngsters in Arad to prepare their knowledge, created some caches in their own cities. So uh, we did it in Sesis. We, in groups, tried to create some geocaches here so that we would learn how it is happening and how uh, this system works. And uh, youngsters in, in Romania also did it. So when we came, together in, in uh, Arad, uh, both of our teams had prepared a bit of a story about our cultural heritage, about our cities, and uh, why is it important for us to see some kind of places represented in this uh, application and how uh, we feel what's important, and what would be interesting for others to share. And uh, here in this small town, we visited also 
the local museum just to research more about the town's history, to find out more what were the significant places that uh, we could uh, use in our project. And uh, then we also try to find these geocaches that were already there, just to research what is covered and uh, how we should continue and viewing the city, like what were the descriptions, should we focus on, on the history or, or the architecture on, on, on what we would like to focus. So uh, when discovering the city, we found out that there are not so many caches at this place. So it was uh, very interesting for us because we could work uh, quite freely it wasn't very taken up, so it was also good that we could be more free in this town. And um, the geocaching that we did, we brainstormed for the ideas, what would be the places that uh, should be covered. And here you can see the map with the red uh, circles are the caches that we published and I just checked today they are still all active and they're still being found by other people so uh, some people plan their uh, trips just to the city to find more caches uh, if they are going somewhere on the way from Romania to Hungary they sometimes uh, stop in this place and just play this game that's available for everyone and uh, in description we have this um, uh, description that we wanted to share about these monuments, about these places, why it's important, what kind of history is connected with that. And um, at the end of this project, we had an event uh, that uh, all people who wanted could come and play this game. Here you can see the winners of this event, the ones that were that found uh the most caches during this this time and uh, we also organized a small video uh, promotion for this uh, activity uh, that we shared on the social media so that the more people could come but the idea was not just to organize this one final event but the idea is that this um, geocaching stays there and it can create a longer lasting impact. So uh, more people uh, learn about these uh, cultural heritage places. Each uh, cache also has uh, a reference to Erasmus Plus program. So more people can get curious, what is this Erasmus Plus? Why, why, why did they do this? And they can learn more about these uh, youth programs and uh, get involved in it themselves. And um, the next idea that we have is to continue experimenting and exploring with this geocaching tool. And uh, in autumn of 2021, we have also a youth exchange in Georgia and also a small town uh, near the capital, uh, which is more socially disadvantaged than uh, rural area and uh, we are planning to implement this activity there uh, since uh, our youngsters were sharing this idea with the other participants that didn't go in this project and uh, they got curious and they wanted to develop something similar so with this idea they started to prepare their own youth exchange so we are going to try to implement something similar, but now it will be different in, in another country. Um, yeah, about, um, about these experiences, that's it. And uh, yes, and then um, one, uh, one more think what we are doing how to uh, how to help youngsters of course we're a small city it's not a 
a very high possibility to study here. There are some 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 schools, but uh, of course, most youngsters go to bigger cities, mostly to Riga. And then then we uh, created the NGO, non governmental organization, used for city city for you. And we wanted to make something what would help youngsters to come back and something through what they can be involved and active in their city. Um, we are not having only workshops, projects abroad. We are doing a lot in our city. Um, they are volunteering in, uh, in, in festivals, in, in all city activities. They are helping, they are playing, singing, uh, decorating and, and doing everything what's necessary. And through this organization, um, they can, uh, they can um, do their own ideas. Uh, if youth house and youth council is more for school age uh, youngsters, then NGO is uh, more for for older youngsters, and they can come with their ideas. Um, they can write projects and do something for the city, and um, and this NGO is already. Eight or nine years yeah, old. Yeah, eight, eight or eight. nine years old, and actually, it uh, it helps a lot for older youngsters uh, to come come back and feel that this organization is like a place where they can feel feel this belonging and the way how they can be active in the city, and uh, as. Uh, it's a big problem in in smaller cities that if youngsters go to to bigger cities for studies and then they stay there. But uh, we are very happy that uh, in Cesis now at the last years, uh, young people come come back to the city and uh, they they have families here and they work here and some of them they are active in in our NGO 